Uh, yeah. Uh, family, y'all. Just keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Uh. That's right. I'm the Reverend Dr. Jamie Mathias, pastor of Holy Family Catholic Church in Austin, Texas. Do you remember the year 1988? In 1988, we had the first number one a cappella pop single here in the U.S. The first number one hit without instruments, performed only with human voices. Do you remember it? It was the hit song by Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And do you remember its message? Ain't got no place to lay your head. Somebody came and took your bed. Don't worry. Be happy. Ain't got no cash. Ain't got no style. Ain't got no girl to make you smile. But don't worry. Be happy. If we wanted to summarize today's readings, we could probably do so in four words. Don't worry. Be happy. Jesus is getting ready to send out his 72 disciples, his 72 friends and followers, to preach his message of peace to all the nations. And he warns them that they'll be like lambs among wolves. So should they be nervous? Not at all. Jesus assures them that with God, that God will be with them, protecting them and providing for them. In fact, they don't have to pack their bags with all those things they couldn't live without before. They don't have to worry about their purses or wallets. They don't even have to worry about taking extra clothes. Jesus tells them not to worry, but instead to trust in God. Don't worry. God will take care of you. That's what St. Paul believed, too. Scholars suggest that St. Paul traveled some 15,000 to 18,000 miles spreading the gospel message. That's like traveling from New York to Los Angeles and back three times, and all in an era before airplanes, and all in an era when traveling was, frankly, not so safe. So did Paul worry? Not at all. Like the 72 disciples, Paul knew that God would be with him, guiding him and protecting him, despite all the challenges that he faced, and despite all the stonings and beatings which left the marks of Jesus on his body. Remember that as a boy, Paul was raised as a good Jew. How interesting then that now as an adult, Paul wasn't worried about following all those 613 laws that his Jewish family and friends continued to live by. In fact, in today's second reading, he tells the people of Galatia that observing all the prescriptions of the Jewish law doesn't matter at all. The law, for instance, insisted that all men be circumcised. In his letter to the Galatians, though, Paul clearly says that it doesn't matter whether you're circumcised or not. So you're not circumcised, St. Paul says? Don't worry. Instead, he insists, focus on Christ's message of love and peace. Don't worry. That's the message of today's first reading, too. In fact, in today's first reading, we have one of the most tender images in the entire Bible. After some 60 years in exile and captivity, the Israelites were now returning to Jerusalem. Some 60 years before, King Nebuchadnezzar had pillaged their city and desecrated their temple. He destroyed the city walls and the homes of the city's most prominent citizens. And now, for the first time, the Israelites were returning to their destroyed city. So what does Isaiah say to them? Don't worry. In effect, he says, your city will be rebuilt and one day you'll feel at home and safe again in your city. Like children in the arms or in the laps of their mothers, you'll find comfort again in your mother, Jerusalem. So in all three readings today, we hear that message, don't worry. Don't worry what? Be happy. Did you hear that message today in today's readings? That's how the prophet Isaiah begins his oracle of salvation in today's first reading. He says, Thus says the Lord, Rejoice! Be happy! And Isaiah repeats that theme throughout the reading. He says, Rejoice! Be glad! Exalt! Isaiah knew that prosperity would return to Jerusalem like a rushing river, and that the people's wealth would soon flood the city like a torrent. And Isaiah let the people know, When you see this, your hearts shall rejoice. 
Don't worry, be happy. The theme of being happy is continued in today's responsorial psalm. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. The psalmist encourages us to shout joyfully to God, to be happy. Today's gospel talks about Jesus sending out the 72 disciples to preach God's kingdom to the whole world. And the gospel ends with what happened when the disciples came back to the place where Jesus was. Did the disciples come back to him sad? Were they feeling depressed or dejected because some of the people didn't welcome them with open arms? No. Instead, they returned rejoicing. Yes, they were impressed with all that they were able to do in Jesus' name, but Jesus warned them not to rejoice because of the great works that they were able to accomplish in his name, but instead because their names were written in heaven. That is, because they were destined for the kingdom of God. And now, brothers and sisters, we too are sent out into the world. Every time we go to Mass, we nourish ourselves by word and sacrament, and then we're sent out into the world again. Like the disciples in today's Gospel, we're sent out. In fact, that's what the word Mass really means. Until the 1960s, we celebrated the Mass in Latin, and if you're old enough to remember the Latin Mass, you remember that the Mass ended with a priest telling us, Misa est, you are sent. Brothers and sisters, don't worry, be happy. As we leave this place to go out into the world, may we remember the essence of today's readings. Don't worry. God is with you, and God will be with you even amid the challenges of the week ahead. And be happy. Like the Israelites, rather than focus on the negatives of life, let's focus on the positives. And like the early disciples, rather than focus on those who are less kind or less hospitable, let's focus on the positive in the people and the events of this week ahead. Imagine how different the week ahead could be for you if you simply don't worry and be happy.